All right, for our home, we went ahead and invested in the Unify Protect system. And once I had it connected and configured to the network, linked it with this HomeBridge plugin with HomeKit secure video support, I think it's the perfect DIY HomeKit security system we installed for our home. Hello and welcome to my channel, which is all about building an affordable DIY smart home that supports the Apple HomeKit ecosystem. And I have done tons of tutorial videos that you can literally use right now. So pretty please do take a look and don't feel shy to like, share and subscribe to always follow along. Now, when it came to protecting our home, we had only two options. Plus, with whichever option we went with had to work in the Apple Home app. They were either a DIY camera security system or a professionally installed one. Well, both have their benefits and drawbacks, but determining which one was best for our home wasn't an easy decision. And with so many products out in the market, the decision became even more stressful. However, it was no brainer for us to go with a DIY security system. And I'll tell you why. One, we needed to control the cost, meaning we could upgrade as and when we needed. Two, we didn't need to pay for subscriptions, meaning no ongoing fees to pay a third party. Three, we needed the ease of use, meaning there is a perfect balance between flexibility and scalability. And we needed it to be secure and private, meaning all our recordings need to be stored locally. And with those needs in mind, the Unify Protect system made total sense because of its robust features, reliable performance, and user-friendly integration right into its network router systems. Not only that, there are no subscription costs. Its products do follow a design. They don't rebrand white label products. And most importantly, all your data is stored locally, making it a critical mid long term investment for us. And just like Apple's ecosystem, which we are all used to, Unify's hardware and software are just made for each other. And it just works, making it an ideal security system for our home. And if you ask me on oh, what's my opinion with this system after seven months of use, well, I am definitely satisfied. I've had no issues with the equipment. The video quality is amazing. People who even visit my home don't even notice that there's a camera installed. And once I got it connected into Apple HomeKit, Notifications on all my iOS devices work like a charm, including my Apple TV with a complete view of the cameras, making the entire experience responsive and lightning fast. Additionally, I have used the inbuilt hardware sensors to run automations based on the time of the day. In short, if you're looking for a camera system that just works out of the box and access using an app with a clean modern user interface and bundled with powerful networking capabilities, then you really might want to consider using Unify products. And if you have any questions, let me know in the comments section. Anyways, to get the best out of the Protect system and bring it into Apple HomeKit to build the best DIY HomeKit security system, I basically partnered it with two HomeBridge plugins that is the Unify Protect as well as the security system. Now this video will be primarily focused with the Unify Protect system since the HomeBridge plugin has a lot of new updates. Let me know in the comment section if you'd like me to do a video on the overall security system that I have done for my home. So for all of this to work with Apple HomeKit, we will need one obviously the Unify Protect system, which in my case comprises of a G4 doorbell connected and powered using an Ethernet cable as a 24 volt passive port configuration, a couple of internal and external G3 cameras, plus also a wireless G4 camera. And this is all hooked up to a 16 port switch and controlled by a Unify Dream Machine Pro which is my network router as well. Two, to enable the integration with Apple HomeKit, we will be using HomeBridge running on a Raspberry Pi. Plus I've also left links in the description to install HomeBridge on multiple hardware platforms. So let's not waste any more time and let's jump into this tutorial. So first things first, let's go through the best practices for an optimal performance and responsiveness in the Apple Home app. One, 
create a unified protect local user account for homebridge and provide an administrative role now the administrative role in the unified protect allows that user to be able to change individual camera settings create live views and also do a handful of other camera things too configure motion zones in the protect app or web ui put the time into setting up and adjusting motion zones particularly with the enhanced motion detection algorithm spend time and customize the sensitivity of those zones so that protect only alerts when something of real interest happens for you three you must run the unify protect plugin within homebridge as a child bridge four enable snapshots in notifications on all your protect cameras in homekit doing this on all your cameras will ensure that ios is alerted to when motion occurs and crucially updates the snapshots of the cameras in the background lastly for critical locations make sure to enable the activity notifications on specific ios devices to get notified within the notification center on your tv your phone or perhaps your watch following these best practices means your home kit experience will feel responsive and fast now with the best practices out of the way let's go ahead and integrate the protect system into homebridge and then take it over into apple home app all right before we go ahead and start configuring the plugin let's touch base on who's developed this plugin and what other plugins they have created so this is the developers web page using github so this is the official page for the unify protect plugin lots of information and you also can deep dive into the extra configurations that you can do within this plugin however if you run into any common issues i always say go to the issues tab and look for the ones that you're currently seeing in homebridge or any other difficulties you've been having with broadcasting somebody's had the issue it has been resolved so you don't need to reinvent the wheel you can always come here and look for it and two most important is donating right so this developer doesn't accept donations but encourages us to donate to a uh, organization so with that being said let's hop over to homebridge and let's log in now if you're wondering why my layout is different i'm currently testing the 4.56.5-beta.40 beta so in this new version the ui changes all of the tabs are on the left hand side pretty neat and uh, is also quite easy to navigate you can also get the config but i'm going to leave this for another video and discussion so we're going to go to plugins and we're going to type in unify and these are the two plugins of the same developers both are homebridge verified so let's go ahead and install this plugin we're going to be using the latest tag you can also go ahead and choose a previous version but we're going to check and select the latest version now once the plugin is installed let's go ahead and configure it so we're just going to click on the setup icon and we're going to put the uh, controller's address so mine resides at 192.168.10.1 so i'm going to go ahead and type that and then we're going to put in the user information that we've created as a local account within the unify controller and then we're going to click on configure plugin don't click on save click on configure plugin and also you want to make sure that if you're using vlans you want to make sure traffic is allowed between them so even if your home bridge is on another vlan it can still communicate with the controller and pull in all of the cameras if it's on the same network you will not have any issues so let's click on configure plugin now once it connects uh, successfully let's not do anything let's go ahead and click on save and we're going to click on restart home bridge so you can see that it's gone ahead and imported all of the cameras and by the way it seems like homebridge 2.0 is on the way i'm testing that as well there's going to be a video on it and i want to see if any breaking changes happens to my existing plugin so again another video for that so once this is configured and has imported all of the cameras let's go back to plugins the next best practice we're going to do is we're going to click on the three dots we're going to be setting it up as a child bridge we're going to enable this button we're going to click on save and we're going to restart home bridge 
Now we've gone ahead, installed, configured the plugin and also enabled a child bridge. Now is the time to go and configure it. So we're gonna go back to plugins. We're gonna click on the three dots and we're gonna click on plugin config. Now, before going to the feature options, let's go to settings. Now within the settings, there are optional uh, settings you can change. There's no need of changing anything, including the plugin feature. Now under the Unify Protect controllers, under doorbell message presets, you can go ahead and add in more doorbell messages. But what I would recommend it is to not do it here. Instead, go to the Unify page, go to your doorbell and create custom doorbell messages right here, as many as you want. So when the Unify plugin imports all of the information together, the cameras, all of these doorbell messages are also imported. You don't need to create anything extra. So my recommendation is do it within the Unify controller. Now let's go back to the feature options. Now there are three levels of configuring all of your cameras, which is at the global level, which is the lowest priority, controller options, which is the middle priority, and device options, highest priority. Now, where is this used? If all of your cameras are of the same model, then you want to do it at the controller option. So it replicates for all of the models. Now, if you have different devices or different models, then I would recommend is doing it at the device option. So it has the highest priority. So in my case, I've got two types of cameras, one with the two way and the other one without the two way. So in my case, I'm going to be doing it at the device. Now, whatever uh, devices you use, these are the options I would apply by default. And then the rest, you want to tweak it and see what works best for you. So in that being said, I would enable audio support. Audio filter for ambient noise suppression. This is something you want to tweak with and if you're good with audio engineering, but I have not enabled, I just use the default. I want to make this device enable. I want to enable the status for this device in HomeKit. I've in also enabled this option as a standalone device. So just in case if this device goes offline, it doesn't bring down your entire Unify child bridge or any impact to the service. Then I want to go ahead and synchrify, synchronize the Unify name. Then you want to scroll all the way down to motion detection. Now, when it comes to motion detection, what I would recommend is using the smart motion detection feature. Enable this for the camera that, that has it. So this is applicable for the G4 camera that I have in the kitchen, as well as the doorbell. You want to scroll all the way down. And then if you're using the Unify Protect on a Raspberry Pi 4 or any of this hardware, you want to go and enable this. Currently, my home bridge is on a Pi 5. And you want to scroll all the way down and then that's about it. And you want to apply this for all of the cameras. Now, if you were having the same model, all you would do is go to the control option and enable it once and for all. So all of these settings would then replicate for all of the devices. And then once that is being done, all we have to do is click on save and you want to restart the child bridge. Now you'll see that it has enabled all of the cameras that I have as a standalone device generating its own setup code is the same as your home bridge code. So that's the same for all of the cameras. Now what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and add in this camera. Now when adding the cameras, all we have to do is open up the Apple Home app. You want to tap on the plus sign. You want to tap on add accessory and then you want to go to more options and you'll see that the cameras are right here. So what we're going to do is I'm just going to go ahead and add in the doorbell in this case, add anywhere. So and I'm going to go and add in that setup code, tap on continue and then you want to go and assign it to a location. So I'm just going to add this to the entrance, tap on continue. I'm going to leave the doorbell as is. And then this is where you're going to enable the home kit secured video. So when at home, I'm going to enable as stream and allow recording. Now, mind you, I've got a one terabyte, so I'm allowed to add unlimited cameras. And then the same thing when I am away, I'm going to tap on continue. Uh, you can also enable who can stream and view the recordings. And then you want to enable face recognition. So this way, all within your photos library, it will import all the faces that you have saved. So when somebody rings the doorbell, it can identify and show it onto the screen. Tap on continue. Recognize familiar faces. Yes, everybody in this home. Chime accessories. So in this case, it automatically goes to the home part mini. And these are all of the a doorbell messages that have been imported. So that's why it's critical to 
configure everything within the Unify Protect app or the UI. Tap on continue. Now with the camera automations, you can go and enable it, but I'm not gonna enable it right here. I'm gonna tap on continue, tap on done. Now from here, we're gonna go and see how the HomeKit secure video timeline has been populated and what are the settings I've applied as well. Now I've gone ahead and added all of the cameras into Apple Home app. Let's go ahead and open it and see how it's all laid out. So these are all of my Unify Protect cameras and I'm just gonna go ahead and open up the doorbell and you'll see that after a couple of seconds or minutes, depending on the detection, it automatically populates a video timeline. Now this timeline is saved for the last 10 days. So it automatically overwrites that information and stores only 10 days. And at the same time, depending on the stored faces in the photo library, it will automatically populate the name. So you'll see that there's an entire timeline right here. Even in the night, it detects all of the op options I've selected that we will see right now. If I go to the configuration setting and if I first tap on accessories, you'll see that it's gone and imported all of the doorbell switches. So if I go right now in front of my doorbell and if I select any of these switches, you'll see that it automatically appears onto the doorbell. So just in case you're running any automations, you can enable these switches and it automatically reflects on the doorbell screen and status and notifications. So by default, the activity notifications is not enabled on all of the cameras. What I would recommend for any critical locations, you want to enable this activity notification. So I have this for the doorbell as well as for the camera facing the pool. And then these are my options. And then by default, you also want to allow snapshots and notifications. And then most importantly, with doorbell notifications, you want to select which HomePod minis you want to enable. So when anybody rings the doorbell, you'll basically see this um, sound being played onto that HomePod mini. And you can also go to recording options and under the recording options, you want to select what's applicable for your environment. So since this uh, doorbell is facing the road, I've enabled all of these options. So whenever the camera detects these options, it will automatically record and store the uh, video. From there, the face recognition. So this is currently coming from my library and then I can add any other names I want. And then from there, activity zones. If you see over here, I have not done any activity zones. I've configured everything within the Unify Protect web UI. Now, last but not the least, when it comes to automations, right now, I only have one automation when um, motion is detected in the kitchen. So as I go to the gym early in the morning, I use the uh, detection from the camera that's located in the kitchen so and then from there when it detects motion i can put in a time when somebody is at home and this is what it does uh, to turn on these two lights over the sink as well as the dinner table and just like that using the power of unify protect we built the best diy home kit security system for our home thanks for tuning in don't forget to like share and subscribe for more diy smart home videos until next time my friends cheers and happy automation